Hello everybody, this is Susie with the Frazzle Flamingo and today I'm doing a tutorial on how to do a camouflage glitter cup. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a prep cup. If you do not already know how to prep a cup, stop this video, go down into our links and look for the video that says how to prep a cup and then follow those instructions, come back, and you'll be right where we are. All right, so that's what you're first going to need is a prep cup. We're going to be using the Frazzle Flamingo Glitter Kit, and this is the Camo Glitter Kit, and it has five different glitters all in one ounce bags, and we have Chewbacca, which is our beautiful brown. We have Sandlot, which is a nice golden tan. We have Oscar, which is a nice kind of olive green. Show me the money, which is a true green. And then Dark Knight is our true black. Okay, and these are the glitters we will be using on this cup. So go ahead and you can go to the Frazzle Flamingo. I'll put a link in the bottom where you can get the glitter kit and any other products. And I'll put that link in the bottom. Okay, and prepping a cup. This is what I did. The first thing I did was I prepped my cup. I used Universal White as my base coat. Okay, and then I decided I didn't really want white because I didn't want white peeking through. So I, um, out of the flipping Crystal, these are Crystal Lac products. And out of the Crystal Lac products, the um, flipping, flipping Awesome paint, I used this grunge gray. And that's what I put on this. And I just put a quick coat so it wasn't so bright white. Then what I did is I printed off a I printed off a picture of a camouflage pattern that I liked. You can go on, you can go on to Google, you can find any camouflage patterns that you like. And uh, then I just took a pencil and I started just kind of sketching in my pattern. You can see that I just started sketching in my pattern and then after I kind of did my pattern just a just a basic little quick one to follow I put the colors that I want it to be then I took crystal lax um, tint their their pigments they're highly concentrated with the universal white and I made all my little pigment colors I got a tan, a black, and I took um, the gloss black with the black pigment and the universal white to get this because I didn't want it really glossy. And I made my brown and I made two tones of green. They're not exact of my glitter, but they're, they're close. They'll have a green hue, a brown, a tan, and a black. So I have all these mixed up. You can get these little containers at the Dollar Tree, Walmart. And then you, you, they have a lid to where you can use them over and over once you mix them up. So I got that all on there. And what I'm going to do, I got my water. I got a few paint brushes. And I'm going to just start painting these little shapes. So I'm going to get started. And the first one I'm going to start with is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the Oh, and I just wanted to say with your um, Craftneek um, pigments, the Color Boutique pigments, you get a sheet and it tells you all the recipes for all these colors. It's already done for you, so that's always really great to have that handy for any colors you're looking for to mix up. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the black. So I'm just going to dip my brush in there. This one's not a true black. It's kind of a really, really dark gray, but that's okay. I just wanted it to be close to that color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these um, little patterns that I have these colors. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it as close as you can get. You want to get it you know, pretty good in that pattern that you drew and it'll cover up all those pencil marks that you have and this is going to take a little time so we're just going to go through and we're just going to paint all of these little patterns that we have And 
And I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint all the black ones. Then I'll come back and I'll do the others. And I'll be back after I finish the black. Okay, we are back. And I have painted, whoops, be careful where I'm grabbing. I have painted the black spots. They're not perfect. I just want color on there. Hold on, let me put this on my drying rack for a second. Let me, I don't want to, I want to wipe that black off my glove for a second. Okay. Now we're going to start, we're going to go to the brown next. We're going to do the brown next. Okay, let me pick this up. And if you have a little arm, uh, if you're using your, your, um, your turner arm gosh I'm sorry then that it does it would make it a little easier okay so we're gonna go to the browns now we're gonna paint the browns and I'm just looking where all the browns are and we're just gonna start painting the browns and we're gonna cover it we're gonna do all the browns next so we've done all the blacks now we're going to do the brown, and I may go back and go, you know, I want to put another black there, or I want one more brown instead of some other color. You just want to cover it because you want it to match as best you can. You want it to have the same coloring as the glitter you're going to use. It helps your glitter to look stronger. And, um, whoops, where I was going with that. And that makes it to where you need less coats. But more than likely, I'm going to put two coats of glitter on this anyway. But I'm still going to paint. And this way, too, it tells me what color glitter goes where. It helps to give you a guide to where your glitter goes. And so you're just going to follow your little pattern that you have as close as you can. It, like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do all the brown. And then when I'm done with the brown, I'll be back. Okay, we've got the brown on there now. And we're going to move right along and we're going to go to this darker green. And then we're going to go to the lighter green, and then I do the tan last. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish this cup up of painting on these colors. And when I get this done, I'll be back. Okay, I got all the colors put on. And just to recap what we did, we prepped our cup. We mixed up our paint mixes. Let me just set this down carefully. Um, we found a pattern on Google. And I printed it out, and I followed the pattern, and I used a uh, pencil, and I just kind of did a pattern, and I put which color would go in that. And then you improvise if you see a spot that you need to um, put a different color in, then you do. And the colors, what we did is we mixed Crystal Lads Color Boutique Concentrated Pigments in with our Universal Whites, and we made these colors. We made a black. We made a brown, a dark green, a lighter green, and a tan. And then we just went around where we had marked them and we had painted those colors. So now we have our camouflage cut, all nice and painted. And this is going to sit and dry. I'm going to let this dry for four hours. And then we're going to come back. Let me move these out of the way. We're going to come back and we're going to use our camouflage glitter kit that has Dark Knight, Show Me the Money, Oscar, Sandlot, and Chewbacca. We're going to use these five glitters, and they're ultra fine glitters from the Frazzle Flamingo. We're going to go on and we're going to use this kit, and we're going to glitter this entire cup. And I used Mod Podge mixed with E6000 for my glitter. So we're going to let this dry right here. We're going to let this dry for four hours just to make sure it's good and dry. There's no more moisture. There's no nothing else in the way. We're going to let it dry for four hours, and then we can come back and begin our glittering. And I will see you then. 
Okay, we're back and we're going to start glittering this cup. And we're going to be glittering it with our camouflage glitter kit from the Frazzle Flamingo. And it has Chewbacca, Sandlot, Oscar, Show Me the Money, and Dark Knight. And those are the colors we're going to be using. Our, our paint is dry and now we can begin to start using our mixture of Mod Podge and um, E6000 and we're going to use that and we're going to start we're going to do it pretty much the same way I'm going to start with the black and then we'll just keep going from there okay I'm going to raise this up a little bit y'all hold on let me fix this camera so that y'all can see it a little bit better there we go how's that all right, so I put a handle on it so it's easier for me to hold, and I'm going to start, and I'm going to start putting the Mod Podge on, I'm going to start painting in that Mod Podge, and we're just going to do it in the shape that it's on here. We're just going to do one spot at a time. It's going to take a little bit. It just takes a little longer. That's all. Get that on the bottom too. We're going to get that whole spot. We're just going to go over it because it will start to dry rather quickly because we're not we're not putting on a very thick coat we're just trying to follow these little lines and we want to make sure we have enough glue on there enough adhesive to grab that glitter so try and smooth it out as best as we can get it on that bottom and then we're going to take we're going to sprinkle the glitter all on there. Get that bottom right there. We want to make sure we got it. And we're probably we're going to do a second coat and I will use Just blow it off, you'll get it blown off, but also you can brush it. And that's what I did. I took it off the to the side and I blew it off. And we missed a spot right here on the bottom. We missed a spot right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill that in really quickly. We're just gonna fill that one spot right there. And there if you can see we have that glitter on there and we're just going to continue on with the black we're just going to try and get all the black and I'm going to try and be a little quicker about it so that's what we're going to do we're going to go along and I'm going to go along and I'm going to finish putting in all the black ones.
Now we're going to start with a different color. We got the black on there. Now we're going to probably do two coats of these. So now we're going to gather up this and we're going to move on to another color. Okay, sorry about that. All right, the next color we're going to go to, it's going to be brown. We're going to start on the brown, and that is Chewbacca. All right, we're just going to do the same thing we did with the black. We're going to follow the shape, and we're going to just, we're just going to go all the way through, and we're going to do we're going to do all of the brown. So we got to get this one on the bottom first. And there we go. Get all your adhesive on. Smooth it out a little bit. Take your brown and cover that. Get that covered up. Sorry, it was off camera just for a minute. And then we're gonna, we're gonna pounce that. We're gonna blow it off, anything, and there it is. And we're just gonna continue to go and do all the brown. Okay, we finished the brown. So we have the black and brown done and we're gonna move on to the um, darker green. Let's gather up this. Let's rinse our brush, keep it kind of clean so we don't get glue all gunked up. And we'll put this in. Okay, we're going to start now on the Show Me The Money, the, the darker green. It's actually the true green and we're just going to go through and start on the bottom like we have with all the others and I'm actually going to go ahead and do this little bit here Okay, I missed a spot. Missed a whole spot right there. So we'll go ahead and hit that really quickly. All right. And there we have it on the bottom. All right, we're going to just keep going around doing this this brighter darker green.
Okay, we finished the green. Now we're going to go to the light green. This is the more olive colored green. And we're going to do it all the same way. Start at the bottom. Get a little bottom piece right here. Sorry, I got to trying to hold it up so I can see the bottom. And there we go. Just kind of make sure we get around these little curves. Like I said, we will be putting on a second coat. It will need a second coat. Alright, now we're going to put on this green right here. I can open the bottle. There we go. Should have already had it open, huh? This is, like I said, the more olive green. Blow it off off the other, and there you have it. See? All right, we're just going to continue all the way around like we have with all the others. We're just going to continue and get all these light green spots. to our last one and that is going to be our tan so we're going to move this out of the way let me gather this and gather up what we can all right let me get this a little more cleaned off than what it is we don't want to contaminate our other glitters if we can help it. You can always use any kind of bigger paintbrush and just kind of make sure you get your space cleaned off, brushed off a little bit. And between each of these, I have been uh, kind of cleaning out with a little bit of water my paintbrush so it doesn't get really gunked up with uh, glues and stuff, all the adhesives. Okay, so now we're on Sandlot. Sandlot is our last color. And like I said, we will be putting on a second coat on this one. And we're going to start like we do all the others. We're going to start right on the bottom. go ahead before this bottom dries. Um, your first coat, you normally got to put it on a little quicker because it does have a tendency to dry faster. Your second coat, not as much because the glitter holds that moisture a little bit longer. So you could probably do a couple of these at a time instead of one. All right, so we're just going to go around now. And we're going to finish this up. We're just going to go all the way around and get all these tan, gray, tan, uh, tannish spots and uh, get this done.
There we go. Now we're going to let this dry for a couple hours and then we're going to come back and we're going to put a second coat on this whole thing. And then once I do that, I'll come back and show it to you. Okay, everybody. Um, what I did is, um, good morning. What I did is I normally use the E6000 to seal. However, my nozzle was clogged up. These have a bad problem of getting clogged up. So then I would normally pour this in a container and then brush it on. Go along and brush it on. Um, the thing with that is I didn't want to brush it on and have these contaminate each other. I wanted to keep them as pure as I could. So what I did today is I went ahead and sealed with this, with the Krylon clear glaze. I went ahead and spray sealed this. So now I'm going to have to let it gas off for 48 hours before I can start putting my extreme protection or your bright tones um, on it. Um, so it's going to have to dry and gas off. So I'm going to let this sit for 48 hours. And then we'll be able to come back and start our extreme protection on our cup. And so I will see you in 48 hours. Hello, everybody. Okay, we are now at the point where this has um, been sealed. The glitter's on it. It is not coming off. And so we're ready now to start putting our product on. I always start with Extreme Protection, the EP, only because it's a little cheaper and it acts as a filler. Um, your, glitter, your glitter absorbs product. And until it reaches a certain point, you know, you can't get it smooth. So... I use the EP just as a filler. You can start and do all of it with bright tones, your BP. You can do it from beginning to end with bright tones. Um, but I have just start from the beginning. I have used extreme protection with my glitter. My first four um, flood coats that I do, I do with extreme protection. And then I switch to my bright tones. Uh, it just saves a little bit of money. You can also make keychains with this, doing the same process using your EP. Um, I also do use UV resin. So uh, either one, you can use your epoxy UV resin, but you can also use your bright tones on all of your acrylic blanks. Okay, so we're going to get started with this cup and we're going to get started with EP. And like I said, we're going to do a flood coat. And that means I'm going to put a little more than, than what they say to put, but I'm also going to let it dry longer. You would normally let it dry for three and a half to four hours before putting, applying another coat. When I do a flood coat, I let it spin longer and then I let it dry for six hours between my coats. That's what I do. Okay, and it seems to have worked for me. So we're going to turn our turner on and let it get going. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put, um, I think I needed a, yeah, this will work. And then I'm going to put what I call flood coat. And what I call flood coat is I go ahead and I put more than what you normally would put. I make sure every inch is coated I flood it on there so it's well covered. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you get the butt. Do not forget the butt. Don't forget the top. You're just going to pour it on. Just stream it on and make sure you get every inch of this glitter covered. And it, it starts absorbing right away. So I'm going to go ahead now, and the coat that I'm putting on now, I'm going over what I just did. I'm making sure I go up and back down and down on the butt. Go up around your edge, go down over your edge, and onto your bottom. Make sure you get that bottom really good. And you're just going to keep doing that. I think I got enough on there now. 
And now I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just making sure every inch of my glitter is covered with product. And I'm smoothing it out just a little. Don't have to use, a lot, you know, don't have to put a lot of pressure. Get any bubbles you see out. And then, and then you're going to leave it. I see a spot I missed, so I'm going to get it because I want everything covered. It will absorb. And you can allow this to turn. It'll have to turn for approximately anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the thickness of your coat. And then we're just going to let this turn. And then once it is dried to the touch, I always touch the bottom when I'm testing or the very top edge when it is dry to the touch. Doesn't mean it's fully dry. It just means it's dry enough for you to remove off the turner and then you're going to move it to a drying station and you're going to allow it to dry normally three and a half to four hours. I always err on the side of the more, so four hours. But since I did a flood coat, I'm going to let this dry for close to six hours to make sure that that coat that I got on there has dried fully. Okay? So we're going to just continue this process. So in six hours, I'm going to come put another coat on. And I'm going to do about four coats of my EP. That is extreme protection. And then after that, I'm going to switch to bright tones. And by then, I should probably be able to do a very light sanding, add my bright tones. And then every couple coats, you're going to do a light sanding until it is fully smooth. Okay, so I'll be back when I have completed the extreme protection process, the four coats, and when I'm about to start the bright tones. I'll be back then. Hello, everybody. This is where we are right now. We have completed our extreme protection. We have put on our extreme protection. And this is four good flood coats. This is dried. My last coat was at seven o'clock last night. Still has bumpies, as you can see. Um, but it's pretty built up. And the first thing before I start with my, my bright tones, um, we're gonna do a light sanding over this, and that's the process. And we're going to remove this tape right here. We're going to remove this, but I'm going to do the sanding first. And I like to do a wet sanding. Um, always put on your mask when you're doing the sanding. Put your mask on. Let me get that put on. Whenever you're sanding, spray painting, or working with UV resins, resins, make sure you have your mask. If you're look, working with epoxies, put on your respirator mask. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of do a light wetting down here, just like that. And I'm going to take my sandpaper and we're going to go around and it sounds loud, but I'm barely touching. I'm letting the sandpaper do the work. No pressure. Just go in a round circle. And get your whole cup. You don't want, this is a lighter sanding, your first light sanding. I like doing a wet sanding. It makes it a little, it keeps the dust down. Whoops. Going a little bit of a circle here. And just light sanding. It's barely doing. Just taking off a little bit at a time. All right, I think I went all the way around. You don't want to, and if you go too much, you will scuff your glitter, and we don't want that. So we go around these edges here, just kind of sand them, and then we're going to do just the butt. We're going to do the light little standing on the butt. Okay, and this is, and that's it. It's very light sanding. You got a little film here. So what we're going to do is you're going to wet it down again, and you're going to clean off all that dust and residue. You're going to take a rag and just wipe it. Just wipe it off. 
real good. And I'm gonna kind of wipe off my surface right here. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on the turner. Sorry, whoops. Oh, no, we're not. Let me take it. Well, I can leave that in there. Forgot. While this is, I'm gonna take my mask back off. Okay, while this is drying, because you want it to dry and it will look a little scuffy. I don't know if you can see it. You'll see a little scuffy and go, oh my gosh, I think I ruined my cup. No, you didn't. It'll bright, it'll pop back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking off my, when I get to this point, uh, let me find my end. When I get to this point where I've done uh, my EP, my four coats of EP, and I've lightly sanded it, I got to switch out, take off my electrical, and put my painter's tape on. So what I'm doing is I will hold my finger on that line and I'll pull slowly, slowly. You are going to slowly, because you don't want to pull that glitter up that you just did. You don't want to pull that up. It's going to loosen it up and you can cut an even line if you want. You can go along with your cutting tool and you can buy tools that cut as well and cut even. And also what I take then, after I do that, I want to cut, I want to clean off any, any residue. Hold on, let me grab, I need to get me a little round cotton. I normally have them laying out. All right. All right, and we're going to just take some alcohol. We're just going to go around the edge just a little bit and get any kind of sticky adhesive, any residue from that off. We're gonna see, um, make sure, now see sometimes the little fuzzies come off on this. We don't want that. So we're gonna, may have to get a paper towel and just wipe around these edges. Just, just a slight wipe. Clean any residue you have off and in there. And then, then you're good. We're going to go ahead, we're going to put on our painter's tape. I like a clean edge around here, but I want a little, we're going to leave a slight little room above that so that it can form a seal. Make sure you got any fuzzies off. We're going to do all that. Okay. Now, we're going to take this and like I said, I'll show it to you in just a minute. We're going to just leave just a slight little, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little, just slight little, you see just a little bit of the silver there, so that we can form a seal between this glitter and the cup, so that we can form that seal up over that glitter. So we're going to just keep going around with that tape, leaving that little bit so we get a seal in that glitter. Just bump it up just a little, just a hair. You don't need it a lot. You don't want a whole lot. And then you're just going to tear that edge off. Okay, we're going to do that. And we're going to tie, we're going to run our thumb along that edge to try and seal it so product doesn't get underneath. Okay, and then we're going to just tuck that in. And that also protects the inside from any product getting inside as much as possible. And there we go. Now we're ready to start with our bright tones. It's dried. I got my little thing in there. I may have to pull it out. There we go. All right. We're going to put that on. We're going to put that on our turner. Let me put all this away. Kind of keep my surface clean. We're going to throw all, get our glove. Right, move our stuff out of the way. There we go. All right, now we're going to start with our bright tones. In our bright tones, what we're going to do is we're going to do two to three coats of our bright tone. I'm going to use this hand. Two or three coats of our bright tone, then do a light sanding. Two to three coats of our bright tone, light sanding. And you're going to do just thin coats. You're going to you're going to let it turn for about 35, 40 minutes until it's just um, dry to the touch. That doesn't mean it's fully dry. Just dry to the touch. Then you're going to take it off. You're going to put it on a drying rack for four hours. Then you're going to come back, put on another light, and you're going to do that until you got a smooth 
surface. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, we're gonna turn this on. You can use these kind of brushes. You can use these brushes and you can use a glove finger um, or those that just fit on the finger. You can just wear those kind of gloves as well. And then what we're gonna do is now we're gonna just, we're just gonna start, hold on. This is not in there very well. There we go. We're gonna just start putting our coat of Bright Tone. We're just gonna put a little drips. And this thing, this condiment bottle has a tendency to just kind of pour out. So I'm gonna give it a second. And always go down and over the edge to your butt. Okay, we're just gonna do that. We're gonna put some drips. We're gonna put some drips. A few drips, and we're gonna take it over to the butt. A few drips, and we are to the beginning. But I need to take and make sure I got it covered. Just go over the edge. Put it on the butt here. Just make sure you're smoothing out. You're doing your edge up here because that's important. And what I did not do, I don't have my clip in there. And I don't know where it went to. So I'm gonna make me a new clip. And those of you who have been watching me have seen me do this. I'm gonna shut this off for a second. I need to find the hole for my clip. All right, I gotta put my clip in. And this is what I'm putting in. I made a clip out of a bobby pin and I'm just gonna stick that down in. I'm gonna wrap that around and tighten it up. I lost my other one, I dropped it. I didn't have it attached and there you have it I have a clip now all right now we can we can do this boop boop all right it, it was gonna fall off you don't want your cup falling off and leaving little dinks and dents okay now we've gotten it really covered from the looks I've gotten it covered I've done my edges I got my butt covered um, and now we're just gonna let it turn we're gonna let it turn when it is dry to the touch, I will move it. I will put it on a drying rack. I will wait four hours. And then I'll come back and I'll put another coat of Bright Tones on there. When I get to the point where I need to sand it again, after a couple coats, I'll come back. I'll show you another sanding. All right, I'll see you then. Hello, everybody. Okay, we have been putting on coats of Bright Tone. As you can see, it's pretty it's getting pretty smooth we still have some lumps around our pattern that we want to get smooth and you want it smooth enough to put um, your vinyl on if someone wants a name on this you're going to want to put your vinyl on so you want it smoother than this if you were going to do a water slide it might be perfectly fine to put your water slide and then put some more coats but what we're going to do is we're going to do a sanding and then we'll put on a couple more coats and it should be ready for vinyl at that point. All right, so here we go. What I do is when I do my sanding, I put on my mask because I don't want any of the dust particles to get into my lungs. Just be safe, rather be safe than sorry. I have uh, some 400 grit sandpaper and I have a spray bottle because I like to wet sand and um, that way um, it keeps the dust particles down so what we're going to do is we're going to spray this down a little bit we're going to spray it real good make sure we got it kind of water around it we're going to take our 400 grit sandpaper and what we're going to do is you no pressure let the sandpaper do the work and so you can go up and down if you want or you can go around in circles some people it it's all on whatever you prefer. I go up and down a lot of times, but once in a while, depending on the pattern, um, and there's no pressure. I'm just going up and down. I'm getting every section. I'm gonna keep wetting it down. And I, at this point, um, I should be able to 
I might be able to, two more coats, two more layers. I ought to be able to go ahead and um, put on any vinyl that I was wanting to put on. Okay, now we're gonna, we went all the way around. Now I'm just gonna make sure, uh, sometimes I gotta fold it, so I have a shorter. And I just kind of lightly go over my edges because sometimes you get build up around there. And then I go along the butt, I go around the edges of the bottom here just lightly. And then we're going to make sure we get the butt. We need to sand the butt because we want it just as smooth as well. It's at this point, if you're going to put a name decal on, you can go ahead and do that. Um, put it on the bottom and then your next coat should cover that decal. Okay, so there we go. We've done a light sanding. I know it sounds loud. Like I'm putting pressure. I put zero pressure. Now see, you have a lot of dust, a lot of film on there. Now we need to clean that film off. I'm going to wet it down really good. And we're going to take a microfiber cloth. And we are going to just totally wipe it down. Now it's going to look all scuffed up. And you're going to go, oh my gosh, did I ruin my glitter? Let me take my mask off. No, you did not ruin your glitter. It will perk back up when you start putting your bright tones on. Okay? And there you have it. And see, it look as you can see that. See, it looks a little like, oh my gosh, I might have ruined it. Oh my gosh, and you're going to panic. Do not panic. You're fine. You did not scuff your glitter because you have quite a few coats on here now. So we're going to put it... We're going to let that dry for a minute. Let me wipe off my splashes. Woo woo. And let's move my let's move my turner up. We're going to put our cup on my turner. I'm going to go ahead and put that in and then I'll put my bar in. There we go. So I can push it all the way in there. Push it all the way up. And this should be pretty dry. We're going to leave it dry for a second. We're going to get our bright tones. I'm going to get my glove on. Um, some people do bare hand it. I just, I prefer just having a glove to protect my, um, to protect my fingers, you know, to protect my skin. And that way I don't have any reactions. I don't risk the reaction. Okay, so it's pretty dry now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our turner and we're going to do some more coats of bright tone. Now I'm going to do, at this point, I went three coats and I've sanded. Now I'm going to do every two layers, I'm going to do a light sanding until it's where I want it. I'm pretty much at the point where once I put two more layers on, it should be right there at that point where I can put my vinyl. And then once you put your vinyl, you're going to need a few more, um, probably three to four more layers to kind of cover your vinyl. And then it should be fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to just, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drip this on, the bright tone, and we're just going to cover it up. That's all you're going to do. You're just going to cover it. Make sure you get the butt, bring it down to the butt. Put some drips, whoops. I got a new condiment bottle, so <laughs> I'm not used to it. All right, so we're just going to put some drips on and take it down to the butt. Drips. And we're going to put a thin layer on. We don't want a real thick layer. We want just drips. You should, you will be able to feel where you started and left off. And then make sure you cover your butt. You get your edges. Make sure you got your edges all right. Get your butt. And then leave it and let it turn you might see a few little bubbles if you see some that you like you can pop them just like that but other than that just leave it and then uh, let it turn and then after it turns for about 35 to 40 minutes you're gonna put it on the drying rack for four hours and every four hours you can put a layer and I'll see you when we have this completed okay y'all we have completed this cup. We've put all our bright tone on this and we've completed it to the point now where it is really smooth enough to go ahead and put your vinyl on this and then if um, to personalize it, customize it to whatever you want. And then once you um, have put your vinyl on, 
then all you have to do is then put a couple coats over the vinyl, lightly sand, put a couple more coats, and you ought to be good. And there's our completed cup.